All right, so there's one last thing that we need to study for curve sketching, which is the idea of asymptotes. So let's start with vertical asymptotes that we've seen already. So a vertical line x equals to a is a vertical asymptote of a function f of x if either the limit from the right hand side is infinite or the limit from the left hand side is infinite. They don't both have to be infinite. As long as it's infinite on one side, then it is a vertical asymptote. So a typical example is 1 over x. Now the function is not defined at x equals to 0, but it does have an asymptote, vertical asymptote, at x equals to 0 because the limit from the right hand side is infinite, plus infinity, and on the left hand side you get minus infinity. So it does have a vertical asymptote here. All right, so vertical asymptotes are generally speaking not too difficult to find. Next type of asymptotes that we've seen as well is horizontal asymptotes. So this is now about the behavior of the function as x becomes very, very large, either positive or negative. So we say that a horizontal line, y equals to capital L, is a horizontal asymptote of our function if either the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is equal to the uh, value capital L, or the limit as x goes to minus infinity of the function is capital L. So this is telling us that as x becomes very large, either positive or negative, the function approaches the horizontal line y equals to f. All right, so an example would be the function exponential of 1 over x. This is not uh, an easy example. Now, to know whether there's a horizontal asymptote, we want to calculate the infinite limit, so the limit as x goes to, uh, sorry, the limits at infinity, so the limit as x goes to infinity of the function. If x becomes very large, the exponent here becomes very, very small. So I end up to, with uh, the expression e to the 0, which is equal to 1. And in fact, I get the exact same thing at minus infinity. So this is telling us that the line y equals to 1, which I'm going to draw here, is a horizontal asymptote of our function here, both for plus and minus infinity. In fact, the function here, I think, will look like something like this if I'm not mistaken. Now, you could see, in fact, that there's also a vertical asymptote x equals to 0 here, and in fact, it only the function only blows up to infinity on the, left, the right side of the vertical asymptote, not the left side vertical asymptote. So I'll leave that as an exercise to figure this out. We may actually study this function in more detail in class. All right, but there's a third type of asymptotes, which we haven't seen yet, which is a, a little more subtle. So these are slant or oblique asymptotes. So these occur whenever a function, so it's, it's again about studying the behavior of the function as x is very large, positive or negative, and these slant asymptotes will occur when the function does not approach a horizontal line, but it does still approach a line, it just happens that the line is slant or oblique. So it's slightly more complicated. So how we define that mathematically is as follows. So a line y equals mx plus b with non-zero slope, otherwise we would be back in the horizontal asymptote uh, case. So the line here is a slant asymptote of our function if either the limit as x goes to infinity of the difference f of x minus the y of the, the line, so mx plus b is equal to 0, or the same thing with, with the limit at minus infinity. So what this is saying is that the vertical distance between the, the graph of the function f of x and the graph of the line uh, approaches 0 as x becomes very large. So the, the function really converges towards the equation of the line as x is very large, either positive or negative. Now these are a lot harder to find, but in this class and in general, uh, the places that these occur the most frequently is when f of x is a rational function, so a ratio of uh, polynomials, and especially in the case where the degree of the numerator, the polynomial in the numerator, is exactly one higher than the degree of the denominator. When this happens, then you can expect to find a slant asymptotes, and the way you find it is by using long division for the rational function. So let me give you an example of how that works. So suppose that we look at the function x cubed over x squared plus 1. This is a rational function, and it does satisfy the property that I said, namely that the numerator has degree exactly one more than the denominator. Now we can do long division, so we can divide the numerator by the denominator to rewrite uh, the rational function here as a polynomial plus a rational function whose numerator has degree as smaller than the degree of the denominator. In this case, we would get this, I think, if I'm not mistaken. This, is, this would be the result of long division for this rational function. Uh, and, and now we can, uh, once we've done that, we can study uh, slant asymptotes in a much easier way. The, result, the, the reason is the following. So whenever you do long division, so you end up with a fraction here, a rational function such that the numerator has degree smaller 
the denominator, and as x goes to plus or minus infinity, this term here will always go to zero. So let's see how that goes. So let's just look at this term by itself, and let me calculate the limit as x goes to infinity of this term, so x over x squared plus 1. Now remember, to find these limits at infinity of rational function, we did, we, we, the, 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 the technique is to divide both the numerator and the denominator by the highest degree of the terms in the denominator. So in this case, I would divide by x squared, both upstairs and downstairs. So I would get this. <coughs> and now as x goes to infinity, this goes to 0 and this goes to 0. So I end up with 0 over 1, which is really 0. And in fact, I would get the exact same thing at minus infinity in this case. So the limit would also be exactly equal to 0. And it will always be 0 for the, the remainder here, because the numerator has always degree less than the denominator. So what this is telling me now is that if I, I just uh, rewrite this, I can rewrite uh, this result as saying that the limit as x goes to either plus or minus infinity of the difference of my function y minus this term, this, well, this is now just equal to the limit as x goes to plus in, or minus infinity of this, which I've just shown is exactly equal to 0. Great, so this is exactly the definition of a slant asymptote. So what this is saying is that the vertical distance between my function and the line y equals to x, as x becomes very large, is exactly 0. So the function converges towards the equation of the line y equals to x. So if I were to try to draw this function, now I, don't, I haven't really studied the function in detail, but the one thing I know is that the line y equals to x is a slant asymptote of my function. So if I were actually to study the function in more detail, I would see that it looks like something like this. But the important for us now is to realize that as x becomes very large, the function tends towards the equation of the line, and similarly as x goes to minus infinity. So this is exactly the definition of a slant asymptote. All right, so we've done everything we need for curve sketching. Now we just have to practice and do lots of problems, which we will do in class next week.